Hi, I'm Coach Amber, and welcome to the Meet Our Ex Success Story Podcast. And today we have a scene with us. Welcome, a scene. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Okay, so a scene. Tell us when before you started uh, Carnivore, were you having any health issues or any concerns? Um, and what made you want to try Carnivore? Sure. Uh, great question. I mean, growing up. Uh, like in a family where both my parents were foreign, my mom's Dominican, my dad's Pakistani. Um, I grew up here. I had a whole different like plethora of foods that I ate. So I pretty much ate everything under the sun. Um, and then I also was super athletic. So I did MMA, I swam, I played soccer, et cetera, et cetera. So growing up, like what I ate or so I thought didn't really have too much of an effect on either how I looked, how I felt, because I was always like moving and, and doing everything. Um, then college hit. Um, and like most people know, you get like your freshman 15 or whatever it is. I think I gained like the freshman 30. Um, and I, was, I was getting tired all the time, um, that kind of stuff. Um, but eventually, because of the weight gain, um, I think my back hurt a lot. Uh, the main thing was that I was really tired all the time. Like fast forward years later, um, I was 275 pounds or so. That's what I know of when I weighed myself. I probably was more than that at some point. Um, but I remember not like I couldn't wait to get home to take a nap. And that was like the worst thing in the world because I always wanted to do stuff. I'm a very outgoing person. Um but like that, like, oh, I, I need to go home and go to sleep. Or like, even at the end of the night, I think I eventually, like, I didn't really want to do much. Um, I wasn't like happy as much or didn't really want to do things. I think I was probably on the verge of some kind of depression. Um, so I would just kind of lock myself in my room, watch movies. Um, and the big thing that I remember before I started making a change was really, I would go and drive to like, a Rite Aid or a CVS or whatever was close, even like a supermarket. And I just grabbed like bags of candy and like chips, <laughs> um, Sour Patch Kids, like were my thing, uh, <laughs> chips and dip. And I would go, I'd like watch two movies at the end of the night and pretty much everything that I got that night, like I would finish. Um, it was just like the hand just kept going in the bag, you know? <laughs> um, but yeah. Um, how I kind of got introduced to the, you know, ketogenic way of eating or the carnivore way of eating um, was really through a friend of mine who approached me with a supplement um, from a company called Proven. It's like a exogenous ketone supplement. This was like, what, four years ago now. Um, and at first I was like, no, I'm good. Like, I don't want to buy your stuff. Like, I just kind of like threw it out the window. But uh, long story short, that just kind of gave me the introduction into the ketogenic world. I went to school for, for science. Like I was an athlete and all that stuff. Like I never learned any of what I've learned in the past four years in class, which was crazy to me. So all of a sudden I started eating ketogenically and I think it was probably a year into eating keto that my friend Travis, which I'm sure a bunch of the people in the carnivore community know, um, I went to college with him actually. And he just reached out to me and he was like, hey, uh, you want to try carnivore? And I was just like, no, you're crazy. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, I don't want I don't want to die. Um, and he was like, look, here's some info. I kept asking him a little bit more and more because um, I had understood about like the, the way your body works without carbohydrates or just the running off of ketones. Um, and so he sent me some more info. He's like, look, try it out for a month. And if you don't want to do it anymore, then you don't, but at least give it a shot. I was like, all right, fine. A month's not going to do much to me. So a month goes by and I was like, oh, I feel even better than I did eating like keto, low carb, et cetera, et cetera. Like, this is awesome. Like what's going on here? And that's kind of like my introduction into carnivore, which is awesome. So thanks, Travis. You're the man. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, he, he, he's, he's got a lot of knowledge there. Um, so when you started carnivore, how did you implement the diet? Like what were you eating? What's a typical day like for you? Did you include uh, dairy, spices, coffee, anything like that? And did you have any transitional issues? 
Sure. Um, the way that I kind of started, because I work in the restaurant industry, or at least at the time I worked in the restaurant industry, I still to do. Um, I was able to just eat whatever was on the menu there, which was great. So like prime rib, ribeyes, like salmon. I'm talking like wild caught salmon, like the good stuff that you could think about. I had all that available to me. And since I worked all the time, that's really what I ate. Um, at home, maybe I'd have some ground beef, I'd make some burger patties. I kind of ate everything. I love cheese. Um, so that was something I wasn't really like, I'd say willing is the wrong word, but like, I was definitely like, no, if it comes from an animal, like I'm going to eat it. So, um, so yeah, seasonings too, really, once I started looking into things, um, I kind of just went salt and pepper. Um, now more so every once in a while, I might throw, you know, some spice in there just for a little bit more taste. Cause grow, like I said, growing up Dominican and Pakistani, like everything spices and flavor and not that there's not flavor in it, but it's a nice little, you know, little, uh, twist into the mix of everything. Um, but I didn't really have too many transitional issues, um, because I think it really helped already that I had transferred from going ketogenic diet or like what people know as a ketogenic diet to then going full carnivore helped a lot with having to do with anything. Um, but I did see my energy levels spike up. The main thing that I realized the most was like after I ate, cause I was pretty much doing like 23 one, I was fasting for 23 hours, not necessarily on purpose. And then just like eating one big meal. Um, I would get this rush of energy after I ate and I would be like, like, like a lot of people think, oh, you eat a big meal and you're going to feel like you just want to fall asleep afterwards is the exact opposite for me. Like I would eat during lunch, um, like midday in between my shifts at work. And then all of a sudden I'd be like, all right, put me on, I'm ready to go. Like, <laughs> um, so transition, not so much, not like I know for a lot of people. Um, but a typical day for me now um, is really like, I'll, I'll wake up, um, I'll meditate, I'll, uh, work out and I love working out on a fasted stomach. And then I'll drink some bone broth after I work out, um, that I make here. It's a really fun, make your own bone broth. Um, and then after that, I kind of won't really eat until midday. Again, I usually eat when I'm hungry. So if I'm really hungry after I work out, I'll eat then. If not, usually anywhere between the hours of like two o'clock and five o'clock, something like that, that I'll eat. I try not to really eat too much at nighttime just because I know I'm going to go to sleep. Um, but besides that, it's really just when I'm hungry and I love ribeyes. I love bacon. Um, I make my own bacon, egg and cheese frittatas. Like anything you could think of that comes from an animal, I'll eat. I kind of don't really eat chicken that much. Um, but I love shrimp, uh, lobsters, like all that stuff is, uh, yummy, yummy. <laughs> I would agree with you there. Lobster is like probably my favorite thing. So good. Yeah. Okay. So let's get to the good part. Tell us a little bit about what you've noticed as far as improvement goes. You mentioned a little bit of it, but speaking of what, what you talked about in the first question, how have things improved and changed? Yeah, I mean, um, I think a lot of a lot of the reason why I started looking into um, a ketogenic way of, of living is because of the weight loss aspect of it. That was really a thing, like being 275 and like knowing that I had come from being like with like people who are in UFC right now, I've like trained with when I was younger. So knowing that I had been at that level, I was like, I don't want to do this anymore. So that was like the main thing. Um, so I lost around 80 pounds, or I like to say I released 80 pounds of fat. So it was 195. Um, I have a ton more energy, like I was saying before, like, I'm able to go pretty much the entire day without having that dip of energy that people usually have midday. Um, but I think the main thing for me that I noticed the most was the quality of sleep that I got. So like before I was, you know, waiting to take naps um, or even, even then, like if I did go to sleep early before I would sleep like a good 12, 14 hours. Like if not sometimes lay in bed even longer than that. Cause I didn't feel like getting up. 
So it was like I wasted my entire day. I'd wake up, go to work, come back and sleep. Like that was it. Um, unless I had my, you know, binge movie nights. But <laughs> um, now I'll go to sleep around, let's say, 10 o'clock um, if I'm home by then. But whenever I do, instead of like sleeping, you know, seven and a half, eight hours, like people say is good. Like I could sleep maybe four hours, three hours and be completely rested and ready to go for my day. So even though I'm not sleeping as much as I did, I feel just when I wake up, I'm ready to go. Like I don't have that groggy feeling throughout the day. Even when I wake up, I'm not really groggy. I'm just like, all right, what's it time to do? Um, so I, I really, really am thankful that that's something because sleep is something that people always, always talk about. And I think it's undervalued a lot because there's so much that we do throughout the day and so much that we always have to look forward to doing that we don't really prioritize sleep. So being able to get less hours of sleep and still get the same amount of rest is like priceless to me. So, yeah. I could not agree more with that. Uh, sleep is everything for sure. And it's amazing what nutrient dense food will do for you, huh? <laughs> yeah, most definitely. But let me ask just one more question. Go for Was it. Was there anything that surprised you that you weren't expecting? Um, yeah, actually. Um, I think I expected to lose more weight. Um, when I went all the way carnivore and instead I gained a little bit of weight. So I was like, oh, this is interesting. Like I'm looking at the scale every once in a while, which I kind of threw out the window anyway, but like just for stakes of, you know, experimenting with myself, I'd look at it and I'd be like, oh, that's weird. I gained weight, but it wasn't necessarily like fat weight. I was gaining a lot more muscle than I had before. Um, but that's really the only thing that surprised me. Um, that, and I guess that, that energy rush to my head, because I did not expect to be like 10 times more energetic than I normally was. And I'm already off the walls for people who know me. Um, so being like, like the Tasmanian devil running back and forth, like that was really cool. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Asim, and telling your story. It's been a pleasure. It's been great being on. I was <laughs> extremely excited when I got the message from you guys because being able to share this is something that I think it, I already do in my regular life, but being able to, you know, be another example of the already so many people is, is amazing. So thank you guys. I could, not, I could not agree more, but thanks again. And you have a wonderful day. Nice meeting you, Asim. You too. Happy New Year. Bye. <laughs>